most of you aren't subscribed. Make sure to subscribe, as it helps out the channel. Without further ado, the series starts with our MC, Ma Mao, hearing her father call out to her, asking Ma Mao to deliver some medicine to the Verdigris house, but to be careful of kidnappers. As Ma Mao heads into town, we see a gorgeous woman, Perrin, renowned as one of the three famous princesses of the Verdigris houses, catch the attention of all the men in town. Having dropped off the medicine at the Verdigris house, Ma Mao begins writing up some notes on her most recent experiment, but is interrupted by Perrin, worried that Ma Mao's experiments are harming her. Just then, the granny of the Verdigris house greets Ma Mao, reminding Ma Mao to not perform any risky experiments, wondering if Ma Mao would like to service people and earn a little bit of cash as a courtesan. Not wanting any part of the offer, Ma Mao swiftly leaves, telling granny that she had left her medicine, but right as Ma Mao leaves, the other two princesses appear, sad to not see Ma Mao. As Ma Mao heads home, she passes by herb field, ecstatic to be collecting such luscious herbs, but suddenly is interrupted by some thieves. Kidnapped and taken away, Ma Mao gets worried that her father will be stressed about her disappearance, but at the same time, we see a blue-haired lady, Lady Lahua give birth to a boy and a red-haired lady, Lady Gyokuyu, give birth to a girl, both at the same time. As three months pass by, we follow Ma Mao, now working in the rear of the emperor's palace, where women are raised with the intention of giving birth to the emperor's children. The rear palace forbids any ordinary men, only allowing relatives of the emperor or eunuchs, male workers that have lost limbs and are unable to work normal jobs. The overall location houses 2,000 concubines and servants combined along with 1,000 eunuchs, but Ma Mao knows that since she is a serving girl, her life is expendable. Ma Mao also notes how there are shut-in concubines, but Ma Mao can't really complain about her current job, as she at least gets paid. Running into a fellow service girl, Shaolan, Ma Mao helps guide Shaolan to her delivery location, sad to see that girls are taught the bare minimum to work here, knowing that even servants like her have the opportunity to become low-ranking concubines, but due to her childlike body, Ma Mao brushes the thought aside. That evening, Ma Mao chats with Shaolan, learning that there have been rumors of a very handsome eunuch that had been spotted in the rear palace. That night, we see a very handsome man, Jin Shi, checking up on Lady Lahua and Lady Gyokuyu. Sad to see that Lady Lahua is losing weight and growing ill, but is also terrified that both Lady's children are mysteriously falling ill. The next day, Shaolan reveals to Ma Mao that there have been rumors of a curse plaguing the rear palace, as all three of the emperor's children have mysteriously passed away. Apparently, this curse is also occurring to the blue-haired lady, Lady Lahua and the red-haired lady, Lady Gyokuyu as well. Ma Mao states that since Lady Lahua gave birth to a boy, she would be considered the empress consort and the higher ranking of the two women, but there are rumors that the emperor favors Lady Gyokuyu, meaning a power struggle is inevitable. Whilst eating, Ma Mao also hears Shaolan mention how Lady Lahua is getting sick as well, exhibiting symptoms of headache, stomachache and nausea. Having worked as an apothecary back in her village, Ma Mao begins deducing possible causes that may have led to the symptoms, suspecting that someone must have poisoned Lady Lahua, but rules that thought out after some more thinking. Wondering if the cause is something passed down hereditarily, Ma Mao wonders why she cares so much about rumors, but cheekily remarks that she should at least go and see if the rumors are true. Upon entering a more high-ranking area of the palace, Ma Mao spots a crowd forming around the malnourished Lahua, who is accusing Gyokuyu of cursing her child. Not wanting things to get out of hand, Jin Shi is called to stop the fight, but as Ma Mao gets a closer look at Lahua, she manages to pinpoint the cause of this supposed curse. Passing by Jin Shi as Ma Mao wonders how she can help without exposing herself. Choosing to tie a note onto a mysterious flower, Ma Mao's message is ultimately ignored, leading to Lady Liwa's boy sadly passing away. Cutting to Gyokuyu, she is seen having a private meeting with Jin Shi, revealing that she had received a mysterious message a while ago, telling everyone that the rhododendron flower that the message was tied to, had a white part that was poisonous. Sadly, the palace physicians had ignored the message, but Gyokuyu would like to know who was the genius that gave them the message, asking Jin Shi to track down the genius. Having suspicions of who this person could be, we cut to Shaolan and Ma Mao on their break gossiping about any new updates regarding the emperor, but suddenly one of the eunuchs asks for the girls to head to a part of the palace. 
Upon entering the assigned room, Jin Shi appears, greeting the girls and introducing himself as the manager of the rear palace. Without saying another word, Jin Shi writes a message on a piece of paper, asking only girls with freckles to remain in the room. Afterwards, Jin Shi asks everyone to leave, shocking Ma Ma, as she realizes she was the only one that can read, meaning Jin Shi has found his target. Asking Ma Ma to come quietly, Jin Shi and Ma Ma begin heading through the palace, with Jin Shi revealing that he had looked into Ma Ma, and records said Ma Ma couldn't read, but wanting to not stand out, Ma Ma feigns ignorance. As they enter a different part of the palace, Ma Ma prays that she doesn't get punished for anything, but upon entering Gyokuyu's room, Ma Ma shows relief, seeing Gyokuyu's daughter, Xia Ling, is alive and healthy. Not wanting to take credit for saving Gyokuyu's Xia Ling's life, Ma Ma tries to feign ignorance once again, but Jin Shi pulls out the message received a while ago, stating that he knows the cloth used to write it was most likely from the skirt from a girl working with clothes. With no other reason to hide, Ma Ma reveals that she had figured out that the white powder concubines used to appear paler as poisonous, having seen various women in her village continue to use the white powder, but at the cost of their lives. Ma Ma also adds that she was able to identify the poison, due to being an apothecary, having knowledge in medicine overall. Hearing this, Gyokuyu states that a while ago, she was given the same white powder, but upon discovering that her child along with the nurse that provided the white powder was getting ill. Gyokuyu had stopped using it entirely, ultimately sparing her baby's life. Apparently, Gyokuyu had tried to warn Lahua about the white powder, but Lahua wouldn't listen. Fearing what is to come next, Ma Ma asks what Gyokuyu plans to do with her, but with a cheerful smile, Gyokuyu states that Ma Ma from today will be Gyokuyu's lady-in-waiting, just like an assistant. As Ma Ma walks through the rear palace, Ma Ma wonders if her being discovered is a good or bad thing. But at the same time, we see several soldiers suddenly collapse, suspecting that they've been poisoned. Check out one of our other videos on the screen or in the info card above. Subscribe, like and comment.